Hello, this is Samantha Shares. This episode covers NCUA's new proposed rule on succession planning voted on at the July 18th board meeting. The proposed rule passed by a vote of 2 to 1. The following is a word-for-word real audio of that item. This podcast is educational and is not legal advice. We are sponsored by Credit Union Exam Solutions Incorporated, whose team has over 240 years of National Credit Union Administration experience. We assist our clients with NCUA so they save time and money. If you are worried about a recent, upcoming, or in-process NCUA examination, reach out to learn how they can assist at marktrichel.com. Also check out our other podcast called With Flying Colors, where we provide tips on how to achieve success with NCUA and now the NCU aboard. Our first item of business, we will consider proposed rules, succession planning, 12 uh, CFR parts 701 and 741. Staff presenting are John Berry, Policy Officer, Office of Examination and Insurance, and Ariel Pereira, Senior Staff Attorney, Office of General Counsel. Good morning, John, and good morning, morning. Ariel. Always good to see you, and John, Welcome to the board table for the first time. I understand that you're going to do double duty today. Uh, I am looking forward to your presentation. Please begin whenever you are settled. Thank you. Uh, Good morning, Chairman Harper, Vice Chair Hoffman, and Board Member Atska. My colleague John Berry and I are here to present for your consideration a proposed rule entitled Succession Planning. Today's proposed rule is the second NCUA proposal on this topic. At its January 27, 2022 meeting, the board approved the proposed rule to establish succession planning requirements for federal credit unions. This new proposed rule modifies the earlier proposal based on the public comments received and upon further consideration of the issues involved. The changes are designed to further strengthen succession planning efforts for both consumer federal credit unions and consumer federally insured state chartered credit unions. Failure by a credit union board to plan for vacancies in elected and appointed positions, as well as the transition of its management, can come with high costs. The FICU runs the risk of creating a leadership vacuum. It can disrupt operations, potentially jeopardizing the credit union's ability to adequately manage liquidity risk, address cybersecurity threats, or ensure continued compliance with consumer protection, bank secrecy, and other critical responsibilities. The failure of FICUs to adequately plan for succession poses a risk not only to individual credit unions and their member owners, but to the credit union system as a whole and to the National Credit Union Share Insurance Fund. Two factors have increased the relevance of succession planning for credit unions. First is the ongoing trend of industry consolidation. The number of FICUs has declined steadily for several decades. This decline is largely due to the long-running trend of consolidation across all depository institutions. In some instances, voluntary mergers can be used to create economies of scale to offer more or better products and services to members. However, an NCUA analysis found that poor succession planning was either a primary or a secondary cause for almost a third of FICU consolidations. Another reason for a heightened focus on succession planning is the ongoing, are the ongoing retirements of the baby boom generation. According to some sources, approximately 10% of credit union chief executive officers were expected to retire between 2019 and 2021. The NCUA does assess succession planning as part of the CAMELS management component. However, there is no NCUA regulation requiring FICUs to implement a formal written succession plan. As a result, the NCUA lacks a full complement of regulatory tools to help address deficiencies in a credit union's succession planning process. The proposed regulatory changes are designed to mitigate these risks, and we believe are consistent with the Board's statutory authority to ensure a safe and sound system of cooperative credit unions for its member owners. To be clear, the proposed requirements would not supplant the vital role that credit union member owners and their elected boards have in selecting directors and other officials. Neither would it dictate management hiring processes. The proposal focuses on continuous planning and development to prepare credit unions to handle vacancies and transitions successfully and in a safe and sound manner. I'll now turn it over to John, who will provide an overview of the proposed rule. Thank you, Ariel. Good morning, Chairman Harper, Vice Chairman Hopman, and Board Member Otska. I would like to briefly summarize the contents of the proposed rule. As Ariel noted, the proposal would apply to all consumer federally insured credit unions, 
including federally insured state charter credit unions. However, to the extent that a federally insured state charter credit union is subject to a state statutory or regulatory requirement that conflicts with the proposed rule, the NCOA will defer to the state requirement. The proposed rule would require the board of directors of the federally insured credit union um, to establish a written succession plan that addresses specific positions. At a minimum, the succession plan would be required to cover members of the board of directors, members of the supervisory committee, management officials, and assistant management officials, the federal insured credit union's senior executive officers, and any other credit union personnel the board of directors deems critical, given the size, complexity, and risk of operations. Uh, the succession plan would also be required to address the members of the credit committee and loan officers where such officials are involved in the daily review of loans. In addition, the succession plan would be required to address the federally insured credit union strategy for recruiting candidates uh, with the potential to assume each of the covered positions. The strategy must consider how the selection of diversity among the employees covered by the succession plan collectively and individually promotes the safe and sound operation of the credit union. The Board of Directors would be required to review the succession plan in accordance with the schedule it establishes, but no less than annually. The NCUA recognizes that circumstances might require changes to the planning in um, filling specific positions. The uh, proposed regulation text accommodates this situation, but as with significant deviations in budgets and in strategic plans, it would be expected that the Board would be informed of changes and the rationale for the changes and document them in its meeting minutes. The proposed rule would also amend NCUA Regulation 701.4b3, which contains education requirements for federal credit union directors. The proposed rule would require that directors have a working familiarity with the succession plan no later than six months after appointment. The expectation is for a federally insured credit union to develop a succession plan that is consistent with its size and its complexity. As an aid, the proposed rule includes a sample template for succession plan that may be appropriate for some smaller federally insured credit unions though all federally insured credit unions would benefit from it. This concludes our presentation. We would be happy to address any questions that you have. John, deeply impressed that you delivered that with just one breath. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and Ariel, thank you for your presentation on the revised proposed succession planning rulemaking. This new proposal would require federally insured credit union boards of directors to establish succession planning process for key positions. This latest proposal also builds on our prior efforts to issue a rule in this area. And as one of the commenters in our prior rulemaking uh, noted, the costs associated with this rulemaking are, quote, a burden worth bearing, unquote. I could not agree more and strongly support this rulemaking. One of the NCUA's supervisory priorities for 2023 was a review of the credit union's approach to succession planning for senior leaders, including any written succession plan the credit union established, and a broader analysis of this exam priority for a large subset of examined credit unions. We found that roughly one in four credit unions either lacked a succession plan or had an inadequate succession plan. That finding demonstrates our need to act now. Without a rule, we can only encourage credit unions to adopt effective succession plans through exam findings. A rule would allow us to require such planning through a document of resolution. The continued health and success and diversity of the credit union system requires foresight by all. That includes the NCUA and the credit union leaders who serve as the stewards of their, member owned, uh, their members' owners' financial security. After all, as Benjamin Franklin once reportedly said, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Therefore, it isn't surprising that the term succession planning includes the word success in the first seven letters of the phrase. Regardless of the economic environment, the consolidation of credit unions has been a constant over several decades. One reason why, and Ariel, you noted this, so many mergers are occurring is the absence of effective succession planning, especially in smaller credit unions. We see that factor frequently cited as a reason for a merger. With this new proposal, the NCUA has revised its 2022 succession planning proposal to account for the public comments we received. Several commenters had asked for greater details and specifics in the proposal. This proposal provides those specifics. What's more, the revised proposal the board is considering today, which strengthens succession planning efforts of both federal credit unions and federally insured state chartered credit unions. Generally, the proposed rule would require all federally insured credit unions to have a succession plan that covers the board of directors, the supervisory committee, 
management officials and assistant management officials, and in any other personnel the board of directors deems critical to, given the credit union's size, complexity, or risk of operations. The succession plan would also address the members of the credit, union, uh, credit committee and loan officers where such officials are involved in the daily review of loans. And a credit union's board of directors would be required to review the succession plan in no less than annually, as noted. In a prior role before joining the NCUA board, I served as a board member and officer for a small nonprofit with a budget of approximately $600,000 a year. Without any contractors or money spent, that board was able to research, develop, and approve an effective succession plan within just a few months. And that succession plan proved effective a short time later when the executive director departed. All credit unions would benefit from having effective succession plans in place. As part of this latest proposal, the NCUA has developed a draft template. This is an important piece for use by smaller credit unions. The NCUA board would like to receive comments from credit union stakeholders on the template as well. While the proposed rule would not make it mandatory for credit unions to use the NCUA template, the NCUA board recognizes that some credit unions may experience a cost if they don't already have a succession planning process in place. This template is intended to reduce the time and effort to develop a succession plan. Any feedback from stakeholders to improve the template would be very helpful. The NCOA expects a credit union would develop a succession plan that is consistent with its size and complexity. Therefore, smaller institutions may have a simple succession plan that addresses a few key leadership positions, while larger, more complex institutions would have more extensive plans for a variety of critical roles. In either instance, the succession plan must consider how the selection, skill, experience, and diversity of the covered employees collectively and individually promote the safe and sound operation of the credit union. And I can't say this enough. Succession planning is vital to the long-term success of any institution, including credit unions. A credit union board's failure to plan for the transition of its management and key decision makers could come with high costs, including the potential for an unanticipated merger of the credit union if key personnel depart. In my view, it's better to maintain many small credit unions serving a wide variety of purposes and niche markets than continuing to consolidate credit unions into ever larger institutions. What's more, credit unions, a credit union's failure to adequately uh, plan for its succession can pose risks to the system as a whole and the share insurance fund, which the NCUA is tasked to protect. For these reasons, this revised succession planning proposal is an important step to ensuring credit unions plan for and are successful in the future. One last thing that I do want to add um, uh, before I recognize the vice chairman, please know that we are very open to changes in this. We first proposed a rule that was relatively easy, relatively non-prescriptive. This rule is a little bit more prescriptive. If we need to move it back one way or the other, dial it up, dial it down, I am certainly open to working with my fellow board members on that point. This proposal will be open for a 60-day comment period, and I encourage all interested stakeholders to provide substantive comments. That concludes my remarks, and I now recognize the vice chairman. Thank you, sir, and thank you for your presentation, Harry Ellen John. I appreciate the hard work staff's putting into this proposed rule and uh, updating from the one we did two years ago. Uh, I also agree succession planning is important. and recognize it's a real challenge for some credit unions, especially smaller ones. Uh, and I appreciate the intent to assist small credit unions. I'm not convinced this rulemaking is the best approach. In fact, I'm concerned regulation in this area could make things more difficult. In January 2022, I voted in favor of a proposed rule on succession planning, partly because I was genuinely interested in hearing from the stakeholders. I appreciate the 26 commenters who shared their thoughts and ideas. Although the proposed rule we're talking about today is not the same one as 2022, stakeholder comments from then have helped shape my decision on this new rule. Today's rule is almost twice the size of the previous one. It now includes state-chartered federally credit unions, where we are not their regulator, and requires credit unions to document their recruitment, training, and retention strategies. This is one reason why most of the comments uh, have been negative, both on the old one and in, through more informal channels um, on this new one. This plan also includes a comprehensive template intended to make things easier for credit unions. I appreciate the effort put in for that. I fear it may be daunting for many. 
Additional data was included to justify the need for a rule, but many of the commenters pointed out the data on murders went back 10 years and lacked the rigor necessary to draw accurate conclusions. Succession planning was included in the 2023 supervisory priorities and in the 2022 Camels letter, and I'm not sure if we've measured those results. How many more credit unions added or improved their succession plans because of that guidance? Hey, do you have a handle on that? We, we don't have the uh, yeah. analysis. Without measuring that impact, we can't claim the guidance was ineffective, nor can we assume that new guidance will be more effective. And we certainly can't conclude that this much longer rule of more paperwork would be more effective than the guidance, which we haven't even looked at to see if it did anything. I'm inclined to agree with my former colleague, Rodney Hood, who, in voting against that proposed rule in 2021, said guidance is a better way to address succession planning. I recall a small credit union CEO, I believe from one of the southern states, telling me that if we passed the succession planning rule, they would immediately look to merge with another credit union. That would reduce the number of credit unions, not keep it higher, because they felt unable to satisfy the NCUA's requirements. They would promote mergers, not reduce them. We also heard from credit unions that have successfully managed leadership transitions, but were still against the 2022 proposed rule. Their reasoning was twofold. One, the rule would just be another burden during exams, and two, their prior successions that went very well didn't necessarily follow what they would have written if NCUA had had a rule back then. They'd feel pressured to follow their plan that they wrote or be penalized for not taking their plan seriously because they would have on the record a plan they gave to their regulator and insurer that they didn't follow at all. So what's the point of the next one? Examiners already have the authority to question the sufficiency of a federally insured credit union's plan to manage vacancies and executive positions. This authority is valid in connection to safety and soundness and should be considered during exams. However, mandating a prescribed succession plan and the paperwork and process, it goes beyond safety and soundness. We're not talking about succession planning. We're talking about fulfilling NCUA's paperwork requirements. The people who are very good at succession planning still object to our rule. I agree with commenters that regulatory authority should not substitute for sound board governance. It should not replace or infringe upon the fiduciary duty of the board of directors. Simply requiring a succession plan documentation will not address the root causes of difficulties in finding qualified candidates. Ultimately, succession planning is a key responsibility of management. Credit union leadership must address succession planning, even if it is difficult. The cooperative business model is meant to give individual members a greater choice regarding their credit union's direction. When members are forced to vote for a merger due to the lack of CEO succession plan, they lose that choice and ultimately they lose that native credit union. There's nothing inherently wrong with mergers, even as part of a succession plan. However, mergers should be deliberate, intentional, and supported by membership. The FDIC and the OCC have issued guidance on succession planning, with the OCC suggesting that it be a regular topic of discussion among the board of directors. When considering any proposed rule, I'm concerned about the needless burdens it may place on already stressed credit unions. So today's vote is not about whether succession planning is important. Today's vote is not about whether some credit unions out there really ought to think more about succession planning. It's about whether this rule, as written, will do more good than harm. I don't feel it passes that test, does I'll be voting against it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That concludes my remarks. I, I, as always, I appreciate the thoughtfulness of the gentleman. Board Member Otska. Thank you, <clears throat> and thanks, John and Ariel, for your presentation on the NPR and succession planning. Um, appreciate the work that you guys put in. Um, I also want to thank Chair Harper for reproposing this rule and creating the opportunity for us uh, to seek comments on the most effective version, um, which I, I do support. So bear with me with this anecdote. It does mention a bank. Um, <laughs> back in 2019, I recall a conversation at a community bank conference with the CEO of a very small bank. He explained that the biggest problem facing his institution was attracting talent and training staff to prepare for a change in leadership. He and his board were approaching retirement, and he wanted to be sure he could ensure the long-term viability of the institution with the right people taking the reins. And since that time, I mean, that I remember that conference. I remember that conversation very vividly. It really resonated with me because since that time, I've had so many similar conversations with credit union executives and, and other credit union leaders who are facing the same challenge. Um, as Chair Harper mentioned, one of the goals of the rule is to help ensure the continuity of small credit unions. 
Small credit unions are often left with little choice but to merge when their leadership retires or leaves because of the difficulties associated with finding new talent on short notice. Or worse, and I think this is where this rule can play a role, the lack of leadership and the lack of thoughtfulness results in serious financial and operational problems, which hurts members and puts the viability of the entire institution at risk. And that is what can also put the share insurance fund at risk. You know, I know it's been discussed, but yes, there are many credit unions who are taking succession planning seriously, who are doing that, who are thinking ahead. But unfortunately, there are some that are not, and we've seen that recently. Um, and so I think that that is where our responsibility really comes into play. And while, of course, our examiners already look at management as part of the supervisory process, a rule provides clearer guidance to both examiners and credit unions um, on what is expected and how to assess credit unions for those sound managerial practices. Ensuring that credit unions don't fail due to lack of leadership is squarely within um, our responsibility of ensuring a safe and sound system. Um, you know, I, I know that we often, we are concerned about, you know, more paperwork. Nobody likes paperwork. Um, I also don't like paperwork. <laughs> but I think we have a responsibility as regulators to make sure that our share insurance fund is safe. And that's ultimately where the buck stops. The proposed rule would require federal credit unions to establish and adhere to processes for succession planning. This is a gap in our regulatory framework and one this proposal begins to fill. And again, Chair Harper's point, you know, I am interested in seeking comments on this revised version. It would require credit unions to be proactive in thinking through how to maintain critical leadership positions, such as officers of the board and senior management officials, to ensure continuity of operations. This rule is not uh, extremely perspective prescriptive, excuse me, but instead provides basic standards for developing an effective succession plan. And again, the NCUA understands the differing needs of credit unions, especially small and low-income designated credit unions. Um, and I, I understand that the staff wrote the rule in mind, with that in mind, uh, to provide enough flexibility. And in that vein, I would like to highlight that although it is not part of the regulatory text you know, I think it is important for MDIs to account for retaining their MDI status as they think about succession planning, as the composition of their leadership team is a criteria to being designated as an MDI. Um, I mentioned this at the top. The board recently reaffirmed our commitment to preserving MDIs, and this is another avenue through which we can execute this goal and think about, um, you know, the preservation of MDIs because I think they are so important to so many communities. So just... Um, a couple questions for staff. Um, many times we focus on how our rules, including this one, will, um, uh, sorry, excuse me. Many times we focus on how our rules will affect credit unions based on cost. How much will this cost credit unions? Um, which I think is an important aspect of it. However, can you sp speak to the potential savings and benefits of this rule um, and ways that they can it can provide credit unions uh, long-term benefits, how might this outweigh the costs associated with developing these plans, or at least at the initial, uh, at the outset? Thank you for your question. Uh, creating succession plans helps credit unions prepare for key managerial changes, whether they're expected or unexpected. Uh, some potential benefits of succession planning include you know, maintaining business continuity, reducing disruptions in operations and member services, uh, knowledge transfer amongst employees, cross-training, and uh, employee retention. These benefits can provide a more seamless transition following the loss of a key employee, both internally and for credit union membership. As you know, the proposed succession plan requirements will impose some compliance costs on federally insured credit unions. However, we believe the benefits of a strengthened planning process outweigh the costs. While the benefits of the regulatory changes are difficult to quantify at present, should the rule be finalized, we believe that its cost effectiveness will be demonstrated over time. We also know that the rule contains several elements that mitigate the potential cost on credit unions. For example, the rule provides a sample template that may be used by credit unions in developing their plans. The NCUA also offers training and other resources to aid credit unions in developing their succession plans. For example, the NCUA has posted a video series on succession planning on its learning management system. Great. Thank you for that. Um, I appreciate that. Um, so, 
I also think it's important for credit unions to understand what the expectations are when it comes to how we evaluate management during the examination and supervisory process, and that includes succession planning. Um, can you explain how this proposed rule would provide clarity for credit unions and examiners who are examining them? Thank you for the question. Now, currently, Letter to Credit Unions 22 CU05 provides that succession planning is a factor to consider when assessing the management of a credit union under the CAMELS rating system. Accordingly, the NCUA currently assesses succession planning under the CAMELS management component as part of the overall safety and soundness evaluation of the credit union's operations. However, there is no regulation requiring federally insured credit unions to implement a formal written succession plan, and as a result, a credit union's failure to establish a plan or the inadequacy of its, of its succession planning process will not, in and of itself, uh, warrant an examiner finding or a document and resolution item. Uh, the, the absence excuse me, the absence of the specific regulation on this topic also means that there are no requirements as to the, what constitutes an acceptable succession plan, and the regulation would therefore establish a needed, clearly articulated, and consistently enforceable set of succession planning standards. Gotcha. Thank you for that. Thank you for your responses and adding further context as to uh, why we are proposing this rule um, and why it's needed to help preserve our system of cooperative credit. Um, thanks again. I turn it back over to Chair Harper. Uh, thank you so much. Um, one question I want to build on off of uh, the questions that you had. Um, oftentimes I hear with small credit unions, the manager of 30 years announces she's going to retire. Her salary has remained relatively flat and isn't keeping up with market rates. Uh, could a benefit of this proposal be benchmarking and helping to the credit union to ensure that it's, it, it's growing and building itself in a way and its budget that it can attract talent at a later point? No. A absolutely. Understanding the cost of replacing the skills uh, necessary to meet the, the roles that that person, that key employee, fills is, is absolutely um, necessary for credit to be forward-looking and, and not be looking at that when the time comes. Yeah, yeah I, I also know that there was an initiative a few years ago um, to bring in young NBAs who had recently completed their training into cr the, the credit union uh, system. Uh, small credit unions are a perfect place for a young uh, person with executive training to, to cut their teeth and, and, and to grow overall. If I may? Yeah, of course. Uh, only because you jumped in. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> um, the FDIC has no similar role. Is that correct? Okay. Tanya, you were at the FDIC for years. Do you know why they don't have a rule like this, forcing banks to fill out this kind of paperwork? Not off the top of my head, but there are a lot of rules that the FDIC doesn't have that we have and sure. that we have that they don't have. And so, yep. I, you know, I think that given some of the things that we've seen um, with credit unions, I, I do think that this proposal makes sense for us to, again, solicit more feedback oh, on. I'll but, yeah, me. but, yeah. We don't have to copy the FDIC uh, by any means. Uh, I'm actually trying to figure out if it's a good idea. When you were at the FDIC, did you advocate for such a rule? Um, at the, well, as at the FDIC, I was yeah. a staff attorney, and okay. uh, no, I did okay. not advocate for such a rule. But Congress can um, put a rule like this any time they wish. When you worked for the chairman of the Senate Bank Committee, did you suggest that they put forth legislation to do this? I don't know how my work on the Senate Banking Committee and whether I advocated for something like this or not has any bearing on whether I support the proposal right now. It doesn't have any bearing on it, but good ideas are good ideas. And one regulatory body forcing them, or Congress can do it. We wouldn't even be talking about it if Congress mandated it. Uh, we have to do what Congress wants. So I'm just saying if it was a good idea uh, at another agency, it seems like it would be a good idea here. If it was a good idea here, it would be a good idea for Congress to do it, who probably should be making most of these decisions anyway. That's what I wanted to mention. But in terms of attracting talent to small credit unions, it is hard. One great way to do it is make the job less of a pain. A lot of these are labors of love. You mentioned a person whose pay hasn't risen in years. Say, hey, would you like to run a credit union? How's the pay? Not very good. What do you do? Well, I spend an enormous amount of time filling out paperwork for my regulator and rushing to meet their deadlines. That's not a job that attracts a lot. Why? Uh, is, is it because you're risky? No. We have 800,000 in assets. <laughs> Uh, we're a microscopic risk to the fund, but still, we are forced to do all this paperwork. So uh, if we really want to attract talent, we can make the job more attractive, and NCUA has some role to play in that. Uh, I'm done now. It, 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 fair enough. And 
Um, just one, uh, two final points. One is just because one agency hasn't acted first doesn't mean that we can't act first. Absolutely. Um, uh, and second, I do want to reiterate this um, to the vice chairman. Uh, this is an open, fluid process. Um, I, you know, at the end of the day, where we ultimately land with something in final, uh, I, I, I want to share the commitment that, you know, we will can continue to have the discussions and where we might be able to land. The intent here is, is, is a good one. Um, the execution is I what I'm hearing um, uh, overall. Uh, board Member Otska, is there a motion? I move that the board propose proposed rules succession planning 12 CFR part 701 and 741 for a 60 day comment period as attached to the board action memorandum. Is there a second to the motion? Hearing none, I second the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Nay. The ayes have it and let the record show that the motion passes two to one. Thank you. This concludes this item. If your credit union could use assistance with your exam, Reach out to Mark Trichel on LinkedIn or at marktrichel.com. This is Samantha Shares, and we thank you for listening.